What's up, y'all? I want to give a special shout out and thanks to Imperial Hip Hop for doing this interview with me. Miss Lisa knows here for ImperialHipHop.com, and I have none other than Nico London. You guys probably know him from Love and Hip Hop, but we're going to get some insight on him as an artist and a person, yes. yes. So who were you prior to you being on TV? Who am I prior to being on TV? Nico the one. That's who I'm I. I'm from BK Brooklyn. I'm an artist. I'm a writer. I'm a producer, musician, and I'm a street cat that grew up in the ghetto, hustling all my life. And that's where I'm at right now. That's where we are right now. And I know that you're doing music. Were you always into music? Always into music. I was into music since I was like 13 years old. And from there, you know, I dibble dabbled in the streets and just, you know, the whole lifestyle of me just interacting with the, with, with, with the affiliation of where I came from and the, the hood that I came from and getting influenced by, by all the bad stuff, but also getting influenced by the music as well. So that's who I am. That's what I'm made of. I know a lot of y'all don't know about me, but that's who I am. It's, it's more than just TV. So you were a street dude. So are you saying that crack cells helped to fund your music career like Hove? I, I, I would say that hustling in, 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 in its entirety helped fund my music career. But I've had you know several deals. I, have, I had a deal with Sony Records. I had a deal with EMI Records. So I'm an artist. I'm really an artist. Like I went through those measures. But yes, hustling is how is is, is 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 a way of me making money and surviving out here in these streets. I mean, I'm, you know, a man of a certain age. So, so can you take us quickly, like, through your journey? How did you go from being a hustler in Brooklyn to ending up on our television screens? Wow, that's an interesting one. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna get into a real, you know, short. I'm gonna give you the short version of it. I was living in L.A., mm -hmm. um, you know, hustling out there. I had a group a pop group that I was doing some business with. And in the mix of that, during the VMA Awards, one year, I ran into Mimi. Me and Mimi had an interaction 10, 12 years ago. We ran into each other again at the VMA Awards. And that's kind of how I got on the, uh, the Love & Hip Hop show. They, when you first met her, did you know who she was? Or you just remembered her from meeting her prior to like the award show? Like, no, did you? No, 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 I knew who she was. I mean, we, we, we didn't see each other in a couple of years, like I said. But uh, when we seen each other, you know, we reunited. It was it was a good, a good way of seeing each other at the VMA Awards, and they they recruited me for the show. They asked me would I be her next love interest oh. on the next season. So so there wasn't even real love happening in hip hop. They had to create that, and you kind of fell for her as the show was being like filmed. Yeah, pretty much so. Yeah, that's how it worked out. So we kind of like exposed our relationship on the second season of Love and Hip Hop, but. At the end of the second season is when we announced we was a couple. And that's what went into the third season, so. And sadly, this over, the relationship is done. You a single man on the market looking for love? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're friends, we cool. Me and, me, me and Mimi is cool. We gonna always be cool, because we got business together. We got the sex tape together, of course. We got the book deal together. The book that, you know, she got coming out, we got that together. Um, I helped her arrange that and put that together, that whole business deal, so. We gonna always be in each other's fabric, because you know, the sex tape is tattooed on us for the rest of our life. But in terms of us being friends, we cool. You know, we still working out our differences and, you know, stay tuned for season four to see what, where that end up. So what do you feel like when people say, because I mean, that was your end all be all goal, but does that make you an opportunist? Like, did, or were you really in love with Mimi? Uh, I, think, I think what me and Mimi had, it was a difficult situation because uh, she was uh, still tied into the Stevie fabric you know, her baby father. And, you know, I was still coming off a, a rebounds of relationships that I was in, that we was, you know, separated. But I think uh, being a, in terms of being an opportunist, I think it was an opportunity for both of us. Mm -hmm. You know, I think opportunities, and one thing I want to say about opportunities, opportunities is a good thing, it ain't a bad thing. And if you find them, you should take advantage of opportunities, anybody in the universe. Are you an Aquarius? No, I'm a Leo. Oh, okay, because I have I have so many lion Aquarius that use that. Like it's okay to be. Uh, yeah. Okay, well I'm a Leo too. It's okay, Leos. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. So, let's so, do it. So I, 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 I being opportunist is a great thing. It's not a bad thing to be opportunist. And anybody who says that, they really don't understand how to live life. The opportunity you should take advantage of. But me, me and Mimi's situation, you know, me and her, the way we started out. Of course, we had some back then, but it was an opportunity for both of us. It was an opportunity for her to bring me on. 
the second season of Love and Hip Hop to benefit her story. Because she needed a storyline. Right, to benefit her storyline. And it was an opportunity for me to jump on the second season to 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 brand my name or whatever I was branding, musical, et cetera, et cetera. Can we touch on some branding really quickly? Of course. What is how do you what like what is your take on the aftermath of the release of your sex tape? Because everyone threw it on you as if you were some kind of like demon who set Mimi up and set the camera up and took the bags. Like, but I don't feel like that was exactly what it was. Like, what was that? Right. With that, that that's 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 that still is it's, it's still a mystery to a lot of people because they nobody really heard from me on this situation. Everybody heard from Mimi, but. At the end of the day, what I would say is this. She's a woman. She has a kid. Of course, we made a decision to do this mm -hmm. together. We, she, she made a decision, and I made a decision to, to embrace it with what we did, the deal we did with Vivid. But she didn't, she didn't make the decision to embrace the public. So I had to face that on my own as a man. I understand that she got a daughter. So I had to take the hit as a man for the backlash that was coming. So yeah, if I'm, you know, everybody wants to say I leaked the tape, I did this, but you can't leak a tape that was signed agreements, just signed contracts. Right. I, you can't leak a tape if it's signed agreement. We did a deal with Vivid. Vivid. And you guys had to actually re-film, like right. reshoot some scenes. So she, right. it was like a camera crew, like lighting, like everything was yeah, there. Yeah, it, it wasn't a full camera crew, but it was one camera person. Who taped that initial tape though? The initial tape, we both, so you like handheld kind of like yeah, that's what we did that's what we like to do we like yeah, we, you know we, we freaky dicky like that yeah we freaky like that you know so we that was in our relationship that's what we did you know what i mean was was, was mimi always the freaky kind of girl or did you bring it out of her i think i think i brought it out of her i think i brought it out of her. i don't think she was always like that I don't so think we about so. to do a sex tape part two not with mimi probably who you looking at now? You were like, Jocelyn, you about to scoop K. Michelle? Who you looking at now? No, no, no I don't know. That, that was a one-off, honestly speaking. That's mm -hmm. not something I do. I'm not a porn star. That, now, you, we about to grease you up. You sure? We got some rods over. We about to. You got a great body. I stay in the gym. You know, my fitness company, Unstoppable Fitness. Reach, shout out to you guys. Um, I just like to stay fit. But I, that's not what I do. I'm not a porn star. No, you're a musician. Let's talk about that. So your LP is coming out. What's the name? It's called The Leak. I got an EP mixtape coming out. It's called The Leak. The Leak. The Leak. Nico. That's the title of it. And uh, it's, it's, it's going to be fun. I mean, I think a lot of people are going to get to experience me on another side of TV and understand me as the music. Mo Who are you as an artist? Like, are you more like of a baby making kind of music? Are you just in the club kind of songs? Like, what can we look for from you? I think I'm a bit of both. I'm a bit of both. I'm a bit of, you know, because I've had people that listen to my records and said, yo, I... I, 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 you know, excuse my, excuse my language. I f last night. You know, I have made love to you. Got that f kind of yeah, music. You know what I mean? So, and I've done it a couple of times. So, yeah, I got both sides. I got the clubs and I got the, the, the baby making uh, kind of got music. That baby thought loving <laughs> kind of song. What's your favorite song off of the project? I think the whole project is a favorite to me. But I think my favorite would, would probably be uh, Bad Bitches, Sexy Bad. That's my stuff. Exclusive is another great one. Mm -hmm. That's the single coming off of the, um, the EP mixtape. And then uh, Tripped Out, that's another one. It's more like a druggy feel good. It's, it's are you, are you, and what kind of, what's your favorite drug? Oh, uh, man, my favorite drug? I ain't got a favorite drug, but I, I mean, I dibble dabble on weed a little bit. Yeah, okay. I smoke a little. You know, when I'm, creating, when I'm getting creative, I smoke a little. Speaking of smoking a little bit and drugs, Stevie J and Jocelyn at the, re at the reunion? Yeah. Drugs? Hey, man, that's what, it, allegedly, that's what everybody's saying they was on. It felt like that, though. Yo, because Jocelyn, you, you know I loved you like cook food, but she was running around looking like one of those wrestlers, the way she was yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. sweating and screaming and yelling and snatching bitches. I know cocaine was somewhere under a seat. Yeah, them Allegedly. Popping. Them eyes was popping. Yeah, she came with a plan, you know? She did, but you definitely had a plan too to get out of the way. You, I mean, you know, I, there's a lot of things I could have done. I could have snuffed Stevie. You know what I mean? That would, but they would probably kick me off the show. You know, so there's a lot of things I could have done too. But I just decided to stay back and chill. So you're definitely going to be reoccurring, even though you and Mimi are not together. We're going to see you on this season of Love and Hip Hop. Hey man, it's going to be a great. This, this, all I got to tell you is tune in to the new season of Love and Hip Hop season four, and you know it's going to be a lot. Are going. you going to be dating out there since she's running through the whole cast?